الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعم هو يكافي ومزيد الصلاة والسلام على خير الأنام وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إننا وإنا تعلم التعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والدعاء إلى الهدى والضلالة على الخير والحث والتمسك لكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله ابتلاء مرضات الله وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise it's worthy of a beneficent bestower of bounties and favors and we ask our Lord most high to send copious and unlimited and eternal blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So the Imam moves on to a, a topic now, which uh, is, is a, a topic that, look, it's scary, <coughs> not, in the, not in terms of sins and all that, but it's actually scary because it's like something that you've never done before. It's like something that, you you know, for example, you go to, to a restaurant and it's the first time you eat, I don't know, camel meat. Or the first time you eat snails or something. I don't know if you've ever eaten it, but... Or prawns or, or oysters. Or it's the first time you kind of ride your skateboard down a ski, steep hill. Or it's the first time you, you put your hijab and you walk out in public. Or the first time you do something that, look, you know it's good, but there's that, that, that kind of trepidation that that you know that, that that bit of fear that's there about oh look can I do it should I do it and unfortunately misfortunately the quality that we're going to talk about it's it's fundamental to having taqwa what's what's taqwa consciousness right so it's those things they have a cautious relationship with Allah cautious not to do haram and cautious to make sure that we do halal it's not fear of Allah fear is khawf that's a high, high, high level. That's a very high level. Wara is the door of that. Wara, that's the topic. The Imam says, قال مؤلف رحمه الله رضي الله عنه وعنكم نفعنا به وبكم وعليك بالورع عن المحرمات والشبهات فإن الورع ملاك الدين والذي عليه مدار المدار عند علماء العاملين. You must scrupulously avoid prohibited and suspicious suspect things suspect suspect things scrupulousness what are, is the pillar of religion and it, it is the pivot emphasized by the practicing scholars all right so the definition is necessary here wa ra a wa ra a wa ra that's the the, uh, the initial word so in the arabic language in lughatan that means at or to stay away from sin that's that's the that's the linguistic meaning of it Linguistically, in the Arabic language, al-wara is to be away from the state that's qabih, something that's detestable. That's the, the, the meaning of it in the English language. And in the shara, oh, also in the, in, the, in the linguistic meaning, it's kaf an al-maharim, to refrain from doing things that are haram. <coughs> Refraining from doing simple haram things. And Sharan, they say it's al inhir al al ihtiraz an kulli sharrin aw inhirafin shari. So al ihtiraz al haraz again is to stop, to refrain from doing anything, anything that is negative or um, deviant in accordance with the sharia. That's the that's the shari definition of the word wara. To to stay away from anything. To refrain from anything that is negative or deviant with regards to the Sharia. So it's not deviant, what people's opinion is, in terms of the Sharia and Hiraf. Or Shubha. Or doubtful things. So you can read the Arabic again. It says, Al Ahtiraz an Kulli Sharrin or in Hirafin Shari. Or a Shubha. Okay? In accordance with the, 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 the knowledge of the Sharia. So it's in accordance with the knowledge of the Sharia. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, when you're ready, we'll talk about basically what that means. The English definition of it is a person to be scrupulous. <coughs> Alright? Or to have scruples. So the word scruples, it's a Latin word. The, the, the asal of the word scruples is uh, it's a Latin word that's scrupulous, same thing, and it means a minute 
unit of weight, a tiny, an iota, I don't know if you've ever heard that word before, iota, it's, it means you know, infinitesimally small unit of weight, tiny little unit of weight, okay? So someone who has scruples or someone who is scrupulous considers the most small things. Basically, that's, that's the English kind of definition of it, okay? And, and uh, the, the definition in the dictionary is someone who is very careful and calculated in doing something correctly or that which is morally correct or honest. It's the same thing. Same thing. So other words for it is a person who's conscionable, who's ethical, who's principled, who's conscientious, who's honest. So that, that, that definition translates over into the Sharia. That definition translates right over into the Sharia. Alright? So, when we, when we look at it, he, the imam, you guys right with that? Any questions about any of those things? Any of that? No? Alright? So he says, وَعَلَيْكَ بِالْوَرْعِ عَنِ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَالشُّبُهَاتِ So there's two aspects to it. There's two aspects to it. Wara, in other words, one is very conscientious. One considers very, very carefully how they go about doing what they do. Which is different to being cautious. Okay, there's a, there's a slight difference. Cautiousness is to, in the first instance, refrain from doing something and then carefully consider, should I or shouldn't I? Okay, which is taqwa. Scrupulousness or wara is to consider it not negatively or not positively in its first instance. Does that make sense or not? Someone sees something, they want to eat it. They see something that's tasty, whatever, and they want to eat it. Let's say a cake. They see the cake. A person who is talking with taqwa would say, no, no, I don't want to eat that. Until I can confirm it is halal, or at least there's no doubt about it. That's taqwa. What is, they see the cake, yeah, I'd like to eat that. They consider it. Now they consider it. What could be in it? What's the content of it? Where's it from? Which shop? What's in that shop? So they're not negative in the first instance. Whereas, for use of a better word, they're not cautious in the first instance. Whereas taqwa, straight away they're cautious. That's the difference. Do you get that fine, fine kind of difference? Yeah? What it is, they consider it in its, in its totality. The good part, the bad part, I'm going to eat it, maybe I'm not going to eat it. Whereas taqwa is like, no, start off with no and then go through a process of deduction into either yes or no. Now, yeah, it is. Wara is the door of taqwa. Wara is the door of taqwa. Because without considering something in its instance, you can't get to the point of saying no. You can't get to the point of saying, but having that cautiousness. And the wara builds that cautiousness. Builds the comprehension and understanding of the cautiousness that one needs to have in their relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. So taqwa is no first until... Pretty much. Until, I mean, I, until, until proven yeah, otherwise. Then, yeah. But with the wara, it's like... I want to have it, so it's like yes, and then I'll follow. maybe not yes, but it's it's equally considered. It's an equally considered thought process to, to uh, or an equation of deduction to reach a conclusion. If that makes sense, it's equally considered on both sides. Yes and no. Let's look into this thing, okay? And then what it would be: is there a shubha? Is there a, a something doubtful or haram? Or right, let's stay away from it. Whereas taqwa would be: look. I'm not, uh, unless I do my investigation to find out if this thing is haram, I would not even consider doing it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah? All right. No? Got a long way to go. Yeah, all of us do. Okay, so the first one is anil muharramat. It's clear. Things that are haram, stay away from it. Things that are haram, a person should have wara. In other words, their deductions, the things they're, they're, they're considering, with, and anything's haram, straight away they stay away from it. Straight away they stay away from it. So that's pretty straightforward, that part. And that, that is considered, and, and can, part of that can be involved in taqwa as well. Okay? The part where wara really plays its effect is in the next part, where, where we're talking about a shubuhat, the doubtful things. Things that are maybe unknown or doubtful. Okay? So things that are unknown. That's in the bib, that's in the door of taqwa. Don't know, khalas, I'm away from it. Don't know, khalas, I'm away from it. No, no, 
don't know where it came from, don't know what it's about, that's it, I'm not doing it. What up? allows the door of investigation, let's say for example in the cake scenario, right? Now in Australia, it's not probably not the best, best, maybe it's a fruit drink, okay? A fruit drink, and it smells a bit funny, as an example. Taqwa, I'm mm, not used to it, no, it's, I'm not going to have it no matter what, doesn't make a difference. Or let's say medicine. Come across a medicine that the doctor says take, look at the ingredients, it all looks fine, you smell it, it smells a bit weird. Taqwa would say, look, no, I'm not going to do it. What up? What up would be, let's investigate this thing. A person is scrupulous. In other words, they consider every minute iota or small detail of the thing. You with me? Yeah. Taqwa doesn't need to consider. No, don't know? No. No. But you know with Taqwa, with the example you just gave, would it, or you say no, but then wouldn't you ever investigate it to find out? If you can? Well, unless they know it's halal 100%, no, they don't even bother. Also, they don't even invest No. Again. There's no... Okay. That's the whole... B the door of it. That's it. That level of that person is that if it's not confirmed, I'm not even going to bother. Whereas what up? The investigation goes goes ahead. What is this? Where is it from? Should I ring up someone? Should I organize this, that? Then if they can't find the answer, then they stay away. Okay? I'm, I'm simplifying it. When I say that's the way of taqwa and that's the way of what up. It's not exactly like that in all circumstances and situations. But I'm just simplifying it so you get the idea of what up. So the person would go and research, call up the company, email someone, whatever, whatever, ask someone who's experienced, and they come back and they still say, I don't know. So what up, and that example is to leave it. So the end result is the same in that regard. When there's a doubt, because it's doubtful for that person. They don't know where it came from. There's a doubt in it, in that person's mind. Does that start off as what up and become that, that way? Or, it should. Or it should. Okay. It should. Because... Yeah. Yeah, well, abstractly, they're, they're, com they're confusing. Like if you look, which way? separate it, they're confusing. In which way? Like that way. If you look at something and write it off straight away, you haven't done anything. Yeah, but how's that confusing? It is confusing. Why? Why would you do that? That's taqwa. That's the level of taqwa. Someone who wants to stay away from anything that okay, they don't know. Can you give know, an example? A relevant example? Like an apple's not relevant. An apple's like you're a weirdo. Well, I said a cake or, or a drink. So something that... Like something that's confirmed halal, there's no example for it. So it's saying that when a person doesn't know. So when there's something that you don't know about... Is that what you can't know? Is that what... The well, the, the person who has taqwa doesn't even, like, doesn't even take it to that point. They just... That's it. So, <coughs> no? Alright, that's a good example. Uh, some sort of a food that's... But see, meat is a different. Meat, y y your obligation... Is, is to not have the doubt. That's why I didn't use the example of meat. Um, would you be very good to do the Sounds of Light concert, for example? For some people, they don't know about is it halal, is it not? And then some people will stay away from it because they don't... All right, we could use that. So the example of a, of a madih, for example, a song, whatever, you know, the, the shusma, a concert where, where people are singing about Islam. All right, like, the thing is, it's clear, but it's clear it's halal. There's no, you know what I mean? Again, it's clear. So we need to find, any, like, if, the, if you don't like the example of the, of the drink, and the thing is, the cake, I can't use an example because we know there's 471, we know there's gelatine, so we have to make those investigations. Let's say it's a, even bread, we know there's 471. I can't think of anything. No. Um, for, let's just say, for example, there's a chicken shop. And you go to the chicken shop and you ask the person Again, that. meat is different. Meat, <laughs> once there's a doubt... If you, it's over. Well, you, the well, you ask the guy, you ask him, he works there, you ask him, is the chicken halal? And he tells you it's halal. So the thing is, it, those examples when it comes to meat, it's, it's subjective, okay? It's up to the person. You you might go to that same shop and find it not, you not, might, might not be convinced, and it's haram for you. I might go there and be convinced, so it's halal for me. I don't want to use a subjective okay. example, because meat is subjective to the individual consuming that meat. No. Nah. A cloning, clothing. clothing. Yeah. Tell me what, how? Uh, Would you do cloning? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you're cloning. Like, like below the knee, and for example, like a girl's scarf, like some of them can be see-through, but like it's still a scarf, like, like do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's a good example, all right. I uh, always don't want to pick on the hijabis, no offense, but you know, <laughs> look, that that's a good example. So if you, if you, let's say a shirt, you're going to purchase a shirt, and it's a bit see-through, right? So the shirt, if it's going to show your aura, right? 
it's haram. But so the thing is, all those things you can investigate to, to get into it. But it's straightforward. Um, a personal example. I was at a uh, uh, an event, and there was um, a few uh, you know uh, sweets and one on the table. I didn't have to halal or haram, but I instantly I didn't even consider going to the table. It's like we're saying no. But then there was people going towards people to the table with this halal. So that's like investigating whether it's halal or haram. But those people are approaching the table and people are not approaching the table. Some saying I don't even want to bother to ask, I won't bother. But other people saying, let me see if it's halal or not and I'll eat otherwise. What were you going to say? I was going to say money, but in, let's say in trade, as an example. And let's say the other person, it's questionable where he gets his sources. Yeah, that's a good example. That, that's a good example. So if you know someone, like your one again, because in Australia we know there's 471, gelatine, you've got to make your investigations. That's the problem in Australia. Basically anything you eat that's not fruit, right, and vegetables, you, you, anything that's processed basically, you've got to make sure there's no 471, there's no gelatine, there's no animal fat, because unfortunately in this country, in bread, they put it. All these things. So you, unfortunately, that's why I don't, I don't want to use that as an example. Chips, as, as the case might be, whatever. All right. So any, because they put those things in there to to keep the shelf life and to make things hard and whatever else. And we know they exist. If we like ten years ago, more, fifteen, we didn't know they existed. So the bread. So the the, the, the ruling in when it comes to eating halal haram. If it's meat, you got to make sure. If it's not meat, you can pretty much assume that it's not haram. You with me? But we can't do that anymore. So basically, anything that's processed, we have to almost treat it as though it's meat in Australia because we know all those things are there. We've got to do our research every time you buy something. That's why I don't want to use that example because it's clear. You, you've, got to, you know, you've got to do your research to find out. So the water is being careful in, in the way you deal with anything that you, you, you deal with. So it's being considering it down to its lowest level. Okay? Whereas taqwa... Taqwa is just constantly being careful in all circumstances. And I, now, well, when I talk about these things, I talk about them as, as circumstances, in other words, that situation, and states. Okay? Like, we don't, the people with taqwa, if you see them, they don't even, oh, the ones I've seen, they don't even raise their head off the ground. Their eyes are constantly on the ground. They don't even talk much. Like, like don't take it to heart, but. If you want a person whose maqam is taqwa, whose state is taqwa, I know one guy, he only eats two foods, smoked salmon and cheese. That's it. And he knows the type of cheese. He knows where it comes from. That's taqwa. That is, and we, like, I don't want to freak you out. That's why I don't want to talk about things that are, are too far ahead. That's taqwa. The guy, another guy, Imam Ibn Majah was like that. Remember, he had... His own chickens that he raised, that he fed, and he would not eat from anything except from those chickens. And the clothes, he knew where the cotton was coming from, and the sulf, the, the wool, and who was threading it. That's taqwa. But I don't want to talk to you about those things because you're going to say, what's going on? Sheikh wants to make our lives hard. Who wants to Sheikh? That's why I don't want to, you with me? That's why it's hard to give you an example. I don't want to freak you out. If Allah takes you there and you want to be there, you're that. That's excellent. But I don't want to, overload you with something that you can't do. It's not easy to be like that. These people live their lives like that. They stay in seclusion 16, 18 hours a day. Days at a time. Taqwa, they don't want to be exposed to anything that's haram at all. Full stop. Any time. Look, th these people are not like normal, you know, if we want to use our words. They're abnormal compared to, but that's the maqam of taqwa. Okay, and that's why I'm careful because wara is the same in a, in a sense as well. Like wara, wara is the fact that Imam Abu Hanifa, right? If he lent somebody money, he lent the Hajj money. Imam Abu Hanifa lent the Hajj money. Then he was walking past the Hajj's house, and then his Hajj's wall made a shade and it was hot. He wouldn't stand in the shade. He wouldn't stand in the shade of the wall of the Hajj because maybe the Hajj doesn't want him to stand there his privacy, whatever, there's something going on behind the wall. But he's shy to tell him move because he borrowed money from Abu Hanifa. That's wara. That's different to taqwa. You get what I'm saying? No, you don't.
All right? You can give it in a historical context. I don't think anyone would look at someone else and say, oh, what? what? Most people would not look at it. No one really wants to give that credit anyway, but I mean, if, if you give an historical example, it is a better way of getting it across. Like, that example does, it is a good example, but I mean, each, everyone's got their opinion on what it is. So I mean, you can't really... Well, the definition is shari. You, you can't have an opinion on what Allah said. What Allah said is what Allah said. And what the ulama said is taken from the taken from what the Prophet of Allah has said. The definition is clear. The application of it is up to you. But the def we're trying to get the definition and understand some application. Would an example be like, say, um, uh, Imam Muhammad al Bafi, when he his mum, he had the same plate as his mum with the food there, and he not he he wait till she finished eating just in case he he he, he takes something that she wanted. That's what. That's a definite. That's an example of what. So the other example, like there's a lot of those examples. So I, I wanted to <coughs> show you the difference between taqwa and the maqam of taqwa and wara. Wara is a lesser, a lesser state, so to speak, than taqwa. So I, don't worry about taqwa. Let's leave it for now for another. No. I don't know the example, but I don't know if you just don't want to say Tadda. You know how like when we first learned about taqwa, we're learning about it like for Ramadan. So maybe like if you're fasting, you know you know how hundred percent just to take a bit of water, for example, for wudu. Wouldn't that be? Certainly, kind of like that's that's certainly like that? that that's certainly taqwa. Yeah, so, that an yeah, that's 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 an example. Like the, the examples of to illustrate the point, right? And and everyone has to understand it according to their own understanding. But the definition is, is clear. That person who scrupulous down to the smallest detail. So, for example, there was one of the ulama, the wali of Allah. He was did a writing and he wanted to wanted to dry wanted to sleep at night. So what he did was, he was renting a home, and in the old days the house was made of dirt. So he just took a little bit of dirt off and let it go on the page, it's like a dust, so it can dry quickly. In his, at night, what did he see? He saw in his dream that he was, he was getting punished in the hellfire. And then he's like, asked the angel why? They said, because you're so-and-so, your level, and that, that's why it's about levels. That these things are about levels. And they're, they're a quality that one person has. They're two things, the quality that a person has, Three things, an action that a person does and a, and a stage or a station that a person attains. So his station was that. He was a pious person, he was a learned person, he was close to Allah, and the angel rebuked him in his dream. He said, if it was a normal person, like me and you, and we did that, I'll, there's no, there's no um, blame for us, because we're just normal people. Do you get what I'm saying? But because he was somebody who was close to Allah, he was, was blameful, he should know better than to do that. So that is wara, to consider an action down to its smallest particle, down to its smallest element. And it's hard to understand because my definitions aren't the best and my examples are even worse, so forgive me about that. But it's also hard to understand because it's something that we're not used to. So someone, someone being scrupulous, for example, is someone that when they, they eat their food, they make sure they wipe the plate and there's nothing left. That's someone who's scrupulous. They make sure they, can, they complete that sunnah. Someone who's scrupulous means that when they go to make wudu, they make sure that they get all the parts of their arm and they go above there. That's what up. That's scrupulousness. Right? Taqwa is something different. So we'll forget about it because that's what the confusion came from, I think. Okay? Scrupulousness is someone that when they purchase and when they sell, they're extraordinarily careful. Firstly, that their money is halal. And they're extraordinarily careful. I one time we went to buy a car off a guy. He was an Aussie guy. He was scrupulous, but that's how his head was. Oh, yeah, look, mate, it's got a scratch here. It's been bumped here. And back in 10 years ago, I did this. And then, you know, blah, blah. Told us everything the car's ever been through. He's scrupulous. Irrespective of whether it's Islamic or, or not Islamic. So you can't apply the same situation to, to taqwa? Well, you can, but taqwa is a different way of dealing with that same situation. So, so the car guy, he'd say, oh, mate, don't buy the car. That's taqwa. Oh, this car, mate, oh, better be careful, you know. It's been, but he wasn't like that. He was saying, look, you know, it's a good car, whatever, whatever, but it's been through these things. So it's, it's the, the approach to the thing and then the state. Okay, so don't worry about, don't compare, it to, don't compare wara to taqwa if it's going to confuse you. Wara is to consider something down to its smallest detail. And in its essence, it's not positive or it's not negative. It's neutral in its essence to start off with, but once you go through that, someone goes through all the process of deduction, they work out whether it's good or bad at the end. Yep.
או נא. יהיה? או נא. שוב רוצה, אלי יש או נא, אלי יגיע לו ידיים. Tell me how you understand it so we can make sure that... I'll try to do that and then really come across. So. Well, tell me, without giving me an example, tell me how you take it. What to, what, how do you define scrupulousness or what in the Sharia? <clears throat> you look into everything. Everything you do, you're pre-thinking around the circumstance. Like to what extent? To the extent you're capable of. Fair enough. Yeah, that's fair enough. It, the extent you're capable of is personal. That's subjective. Objectively... In terms of the Sharia, it's down to its smallest part. You're down to its sort of, in, in a sense. More than inquisitive. You're, you're going through a process of deduction to try and establish whether this thing is good or not good. To get the certainty. Positive or not positive. Is the halal first step. or not wow. halal. I mean, inquisitive is the first step, and then from inquisitive. Yeah. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't mean in the colloquial sense okay. of inquisitive. I mean a person that has, that's systematic in in. Going through a procedure to attain a result at the end. Investigative. Investigative, if you like to call it that. So it's a procedure or a process or an equation or a theory or a formula, if you like, that a, that a person uses to determine whether this thing is, I can do it or can't do it. That's basically what it is. But down to its smallest level. Like Abu Hanifa, because the, 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 if you give someone... What's a riba? That's what uh, that's Abu Hanifa was afraid of, that the shadow or the shade was riba. Was, riba means extra. So he was getting something extra out of the loan. So if someone gave him a gift, of course it's clear, he won't take it unless they're normally... Someone gave him a gift because he lent him the money, that's clear. Someone said, oh, here's your thousand dollars back or dirham, and here's another hundred. It's, ha it's clearly haram. But the shade, because of Abu Hanifa's understanding and comprehension, and the fact that his quality, his, one of the qualities he had was wada, he worked it out through the process. Like, who's going to think that? Who's going to think that because I stand in the shade of this, you know, one of the other scholars, same thing happened. There was a, a group that, like, they do insurance, or not insurance, loans. They loan money to people. And they sent him uh, a box of tamar uh, ajwa. Uh, and, and he sent it back. Right? Why did he send it back? He says, people are going to ask me, about whether your product is halal or haram. And I don't want to be tainted, or I don't, the water, that's water. That's water. Scrupulousness. He thought about it. If someone asked me, and, and then I've taken from the, then I've got a conflict of interest here. If someone asked me, do you know these guys? Oh, yeah, okay. Do you know their product? Yeah, I know their product. Is it good? Yes, it's good. Have you taken money from them f f to, to say it's halal? No. I've taken a gift, though. So it's a conflict of interest there for the sheikh. To give people advice about something that he's involved now. Once you take the gift, he's involved. He's on not on the payroll, but he's involved. You get me? That's what up. That's what up. So he went through a process of deduction to, to determine should he accept the gift or should he not accept the gift from a party that wants him to give a ruling of the deen regarding to the, regarding their product. That's what up. Went through the process of deduction to determine that thing there. Is I don't want to do it. If he took it, is it halal? Yeah. Yeah. It's halal. Is it doing extra than the norm? So you got the minimum, and you're doing more than the minimum. Look, it is. It's, we, yeah, it's the, definitely, it's definitely more. It's it's a quality. Like I said, it's a station and it's an action. The reason why it's so important because it, it's it it gets the mind working in a particular way in terms of your deen. It gets a person to think about all the things they're doing. And in the end, it creates God consciousness, which is? All right. Yeah? Before we go on, like, just let that sink in. It creates that pattern. So you're just taking everything into account. Even if the thing's halal, is it going to lead you to haram or haram? Ahlan. All right? That's another way to look at it. But that's what the essence of it is. Say it again. So you take everything into account, even if the thing is halal, just to see whether it's going to lead you to halal or haram. That or right. That's scrupulousness. Isn't it the 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 hobbies that say we used to leave ninety percent of? We'll get into that. That, that oh. comes. That remember Dad will talk about that. Now, someone had a question. Someone was moving. Finally, that brother. Yeah. I was thinking something. Um, after that, I don't want to. I don't want to ask the question. Anymore. Why? No. Well, look. Look. There's no judgment. So, so I can be a bit hard sometimes. Forgive no, me. No. Yeah, because. But um, especially. <laughs> I'm not asking for me really to understand. I'm just trying to draw out the understanding no, you want us to have. That, because that, I've got my own understanding. No. No. Don't do that. 
everyone get their own understanding. This is about you. This is not like, we're not here just to read a book and go home. We're here to change our lives. Every, every one of us is here, myself included, to change our lives. Don't worry about it. Get your understanding. Firstly, understand what the Shadat says, and then get your own understanding of that. But the definition has to be correct, otherwise your own understanding will be incorrect. Naam. Um, will the best of people have a balance of wada and taqwa, or one or the other? No, no, there's not one or the other. There's not one so or the other. balance of both. Huh? Yeah, yeah, like, there's a lot of sifat, ihsan, all the different qualities we had. Like, my fault, I shouldn't have bring up taqwa. My bad, alright? <coughs> it just threw you guys totally in a loop, and it's my fault. I, I apologize for that. Wada, let's just concentrate on that. It's that process that a person uses to determine the action they're doing. Okay? What does it, even if it's halal, I'm going to the shop. It's halal. I want to buy tomatoes. It's halal. I've got my money that I earned from kasab yadi, from my own hand. It's halal. Right? Now the what up process is, how am I going to get there? What happens on the way? Where am I going to? Is it a hot day? Is it a cold day? Who am I going to see? Can I exchange the money without touching the hand of the person who's opposite the opposite sex, especially if you're a Shafi? It's haram anyway, but it breaks your door if you're a Shafi. Um, am I going to... That's what up! That's what up! That's what up! That's what I'm saying. I don't want to freak you out, but he's a freaked out, so... Is so a job not done. or a process? No? Is it a station or a process? It is three things. It's a process, yeah. it's the actual action itself, <coughs> and then it becomes a station. The person who is constantly has the, has the station of what up they're constantly thinking about these things. That's, and it creates God consciousness, which is something else we don't want to mention that word. So you could have that without knowing the, the, without knowing the definition. You could actually have that. Of course you could have it without having the definition. No doubt. The definition, of course, that's a quality. And it's a, it's a way that people think about things. No doubt about it. There's no doubt. We have the definition so we can understand what Allah wants from us within that process. And so that whatever we're doing, we can bring it back to Allah so we don't just get our ego playing with us and thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm cool, you know, I'm MC, whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm all right. Okay? So that's why, it, <coughs> that's why we, we constantly, I know, sorry, bro, I'm killing your life, but, nah. you know, unfortunately, you know, we all have to understand. There's no point anyone leaving without understanding. That's why we ask questions. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. I don't want to freak you out, but I want you to understand it. So if you decide to take that road, which I encourage you to, then you, you know what you're doing. You know where, where, where it's getting you to. All right? And the definitions are a bit hard. Sometimes they're a bit hard. You know what I mean? All right. I want to go to the movies. Another one. What up? Okay? I want to go to the movies. Where is it at? What time is it? Am I going to miss my salat? If I don't have wudu, can I make my wudu? If I want to pray salat, where can I pray the salat? Can I find the direction of Qibla? Okay? What's in the movie? Who am I going to sit next to? Is there someone else going to sit who's not... Like, that's what up. you got to think about these things. In the movie, what's playing? Are they swearing? Are they using drugs? Are they drinking alcohol? Are they doing adultery? Are they blaspheming? Are they talking? They're the things that a person who has what up has to consider. It's not rock, paper, scissors or flipping a coin. They're, they're the things that a person who has what up considers. And why do you think they have a high maqam with Allah? Right. They, they're, they're, exactly. They're, they're, they're processed in life. It's not about me. It's about Allah. It's not about the person. It's about Allah. So as they're considering things, right, they're bringing the halal and the haram in each time. The halal and the haram in each time. The permissible and the impermissible. The sunnah and the, un, and the makruh. The mandub, and the, which is sunnah, and the mubah. Right? Yeah? yeah. Yep. Cool? Sweet? Okay. No? Nah? Sweet. <laughs> Sweet it is. Alright, and that's it. And then next week we'll talk a bit more about it. And then we'll, we'll look at some of the, the way the, the, the awliya and the salihin and, and these people thought about it. And, and not only that, going back to, to riba, backbiting and these different things, that that is what up too. That is what up before the tongue is used that the processes inside the brain go through. If I say this is a haram, if I say this is a riba, is it namima? Does the person know that person? Why am I saying what I'm saying? Why, why am I saying what I'm saying? So what happens to the brain? What happens to the heart? What happens to the soul? What happens to the sir? What happens to the spirit? 
Yeah, of course. It's illuminated. It's dilated. It's inflated. Just to get back to what I fuck with. Please the do. extent of your water, the most I fuck with, is the how... Let's forget about it, bro. Let's forget about it. Please. Uh, All right? We, we got confused. Do you think about it till next week? It's fine because it's good to think about things like that. Okay? It's good for your brain to, to consider these. I'll come to you. Those. It's good for your brain to consider those things because you're not going to get off the track. As long as you know what water is, you're not going to get off the track. And then you can think about it and next week tell us what you think. Right? Once, once I was before you, then we'll come to you now. So much you drive yourself crazy? That's waswasa. Okay. Alright? That's waswasa. When you overthink and then you go too much into it and and, and and the shaitan comes and plays with your head. But it's not okay, maybe it sounded overwhelming when I was saying it, but it should it shouldn't be for the believer. Right? The believer should be able to navigate any and every single situation. The believer should be able to navigate every single and any situation. The true believer, not the one who's hekam laflif as they say, ah, whatever, just a puffy believer. Hey, on the outside, I look like I'm a believer, but on the inside, someone's something else. And the thought process, the process of deduction, and the application of the halal and haram is what leads a person to that. So, you know, the, this one of the I think I've told you the story. The the pious the pious man, uh, he was a he was in the he was in the when I the the houses of prostitution, the brothels every day and the pubs every every night. Taught us that one? Yeah. Alright. How did he die? The Khalifa came, right? Because that's his he, it's that's his process of the he understood what's going on in the city. And I told him about the pious lady, she's giving money to the beggars who and she knows she's gonna use it for drugs. Right? But better that she give them money for drugs than they go you know, not steal but shoot someone or bash someone or do something to someone, right? And when Allah they've caused a bigger crime than the initial crime. And they're not Muslims anyway, whatever. And she doesn't know they're going to use it for drugs. She believes they will, and they look like they probably will. Okay? So that's the, that's the type of thing that wada leads to. That's the type of, of application in one's life that, that wada leads to. It's, it's that, that considering things down to that level. So it shouldn't be that you're going nuts over it. Should we start slowly? Right? Start slowly. And unfortunately it means that things that other people are going to do, you're not going to do in the end. Because your own conscience has... And, and some people may think that they won't get to that level of deduction. That's what you're talking about. One's own, that's a, 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 subjectively speaking. That's fine, but at least they've gone through one or two steps. And someone will go past that. Someone will go 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or 300 steps. That's fine for that individual. But that's the subjective application of the idea, idea of the theory of that shit. Alright, so think about it. Uh, make sure that you understand the definition and read ahead a little bit so you can kind of get an understanding. I, look, I don't mind. I think it's good that we go through these things. and we Because look, if any one of us, just one of us, can even start to begin to get the water, then it's a big thing in life. And Sahih, Sahih, the process will will tie you out mentally, but watch spiritually what it'll do to you. Spiritually, you'll be them. That's when you get your itmatnan. Oh, let me point the pen at you. That's when you get your itmatnan, right? That's when you get your your comfort. That's when you get your your sakina. That's when you get your tranquility. That's when you get your contentment, because you know what you're doing. You've thought it through. If, if that's it. Yep, yep, no, no. Khalas. Wa ida azamta fatawakkal ala Allah. You've made your decision after the process. You've done what you, and we talked about decision the Imam talked about a couple of weeks ago. Whatever it's istikhara, whatever it might be, istishara, you, you've done your istikhara, you've consulted. Now there's nothing there's no more doubts. There's no more doubts. Getting rid of doubts is the quickest way to get to Allah. One of the quickest ways to get to Allah. The doubts, that's what holds you back. That's waswasa. That's what holds you back. So yeah, it sounds like it's tough. Yeah, it sounds like it's hard. Yeah, it sounds like it's impossible. And it, at the beginning, like that's why I'm a bit worried about saying it to you. And maybe that's why we went a bit off on a tangent. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing that we learned what it was. Because when the heart feels that, the heart doesn't have to worry anymore. Like imagine you're eating something and you're thinking, is this halal? Is this haram? Should I? Is it doubtful? Well, firstly, your body's not going to benefit from it. 
You're probably going to get sick. You're going to get indigestion. And what about your spirit? It's perturbed. A nafs al inna. A nafs that is contented. So yeah, maybe you have a bit of brain strain for a while, but eventually it will get to the stage where the heart is content and the process won't cause you to be perturbed spiritually, nor will it cause you to be perturbed mentally or, or intellectually because you would have already been living your life in that way. <coughs> now, Just one question. I'm going to mention Takwe. Um, uh, <laughs> um, if you exercise water for long enough, does it lead to Takwe because it should. it's a habit? So you know, you've already done the calculation, so already you know where it's going to lead. So you know straight away this... The yeah, that's away. one. That's one of the ways it can do so. So you've already concluded it, and you know that's the case. So you stay away from okay. it. Yeah, you can. That's the beginning stages of taqwa. Uh, Depends on what you mean. Like if you if you hear something. You heard something. You ate something. Oh, sorry. I thought you said you heard. Sorry. So that's where warak comes into it. That's where warak comes into it. In that, in that scenario, if you think it's ha not halal, you shouldn't eat it. But anyway, that's unfortunately or fortunately, that's the ruling in the shara. With, with things that you, if you're doubtful about something, you should not eat it. Unless you make your investigations. Yeah, I'll come to you in a sec. So unless you make your investigations and you work out, oh no, it's fine. Then you can eat it. But on first instance, you look at it, or you know, you. you, you Whatever, you look at it in the first instance or you smell it, it doesn't, if you're doubtful, then for you to eat it at that stage is haram if you're doubtful about it. Of course, unless you make your investigations and you find out, no, no, it's halal, then it's okay for you to eat it. Alright, now. So is it the same when um, like you're, in the, you're actually like in the presence of like eating something and you feel like you're doing something that you Okay, great question. So it's in your mouth and then someone tells you and then you get the doubt. If it's in your mouth, spit it out, right? And don't eat the rest. If you've already swallowed it. So that's where one comes into it. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al when that happened to him, what did he do? He regurgitated it. He forced himself to, to spew it out. Now, other, other Sahabis, they didn't do that. Because at the time that they ate it, at the time that they ate half the cake, as an example, okay, half the cake, at the time you ate that first half of the cake, you thought it was halal. You with me? So it's halal for you. Then as you ate halfway through, someone said something that made you doubtful. From that stage onwards, it becomes haram. Is that, a, is that due to lack of water that you ate the first half of the cake? It depends. If you had no doubt about it, you went to a shop that you always know, you've done your investigations. So it depends on the circumstance. Again, it's subjective. So you go to the same, it's a halal shop. Every time you've gone there, you've asked about every single cake and you're satisfied with all of them. But you know, they may have changed something you weren't aware of. So not necessarily, but it could also be. Um, with that same example, if um, someone's eating it and you know it's not connected, you can swallow it or do you just... No, you should tell them straight away. Okay. If they spit it out, it's better than letting, letting them digest it. How about if you tell them and they don't listen? That's up to them. You've done your job. Okay. You know what I mean? Just don't think bad of them because everyone's got their, you know, their issues. Yeah, is that it? Anything else? Our examples are killing us today, but it's good, right? It's good. It's good to go through that process of understanding what it is that Allah wants from you and how it is that you can walk that path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, are we, is everyone like pretty alright with it? No one's confused anymore? Yeah. You alright with it or not yet? Yeah? yeah? Alright? Yeah? Can we say like some of the examples that we're speaking about, somewhere you're, you're, you're using water in According, with, uh, according to something that's, that is a bit doubtful. Like, you're not, you're not sure, you just want to make sure that it's um, halal or not. Okay, so, with anything other than food, that applies. Yeah, other, anything other than food. But then, it's, but then also we, we spoke about some examples where the thing is halal, but they still use water in it. Should still so use is, water. Is that, like the higher, is that a higher level above the water with the doubtful? In, in, look, in, in, terms of, in terms of levels, water is water. Okay, so it's water it's across in, the in board the because it applies to both yeah. halal and haram like you, you you gave that example about the sahaba so the person even if it's saying halal they're still thinking what is the effect of that I'll give you an example water right the person's super thirsty like a hot day like today as an example water the, the water's there they come and now it's water what do they do they take the sunnah they smell it they look inside it they taste it right first and then they know that over drinking is no good either. 
that's an example of water. So they and the Prophet said, take small sips alayhi salatu salam. So that's an example, it's completely halal inshallah. Okay, but the water doesn't only apply to halal, and it doesn't only apply to haram, and it doesn't only apply to the doubtful, it applies across the board. But what you might say is, it's a state, and it's an action, but for us to understand it, it's kind of the process that one uses to determine the permissibility or otherwise of doing or not doing that thing. Yeah, which is what the definition was in Arabic. <laughs> Alright? Yeah? Cool? Any questions? No? Alright, so it's good. I would prefer a class, I would prefer you guys to be like this and try and understand everything and just let it go through. Because there's no point. You don't achieve anything. I'm not in a hurry to do anything. We're not, there's no exams, there's no one looking over our shoulder. It's just us trying to understand the laws of Ujjad. So as long as you guys understand it, I'm happy. Next week, though, we'll see if you understand it or not. Is an action, it's a state, and it's a... And it's the, the, the process itself. Yeah. It's the process itself. So the state meaning condition, and the process. What is a state? Because you, you cannot be, you cannot consider things to their, to their smallest being, infinitesimal state, until you go through, you can't get there. Like, you know, you, like for example, in a science example, this is us, start off as a solid, isn't that right? I'm pretty terrible with, so, with solid. Then it goes down to another state. Then it goes down to an atom. Then it goes down to a nuclei and electron and proton or whatever it is. Then, you know, black matter, whatever. So that's the kind of type of thing that we're talking about. I'm terrible with science, so, you know, whatever. But point being is you get what I'm saying. So it's breaking that down to get to the, the, the basic smallest particle of it so that you can understand how that thing works and to do it or not to do it. Cool? Yeah, so Alright, is that clear on the science example? <laughs> <laughs> Alright? Make sure you revise it for next week, otherwise it will just disappear. Try and make it to somewhere we can play a share.